kit for uh, a year and four months and I can't believe that I'm this far in the build. Uh, I am almost ready to start messing with the body back here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I've got some recommendations from some other guys that are doing uh, their build. But I wanted to give some uh, recommendations because I've had uh, many comments of uh, other guys that are expecting their kit and they're watching my build. And uh, to you, thank you very much. But as an amateur um, who doesn't have any uh, professional training as far as auto mechanics who has only attended YouTube University uh, there's definitely some recommendations that I have uh, for those out there looking to do a build like this something similar or maybe one of these roadsters and the first thing is is an electric wrench this is awesome. It has saved me so much time and my knuckles. Um, and, uh, you know, these things I think are about under a hundred bucks. This one I'll put the link in the description below. It's AC Delco and I think it torques about 40, 45. And then uh, once you're, you're done with the automatic portion, it's, you can still use it as a regular uh, wrench. But uh, this comes with two batteries so you just swap them out there's no downtime for charging and uh, this has really helped and anywhere you can get anywhere you can really get this ratchet um, you're gonna be able to get one of these in there and there's a lot of tight spots uh, in this car that uh, something like a ratchet like this you just don't have a lot of room you might get a few clicks few clicks few clicks it's gonna take you a while but an electric wrench really gets this job done uh, quick because a lot of things go on and they need to come back off because you did it wrong or you got to adjust something and this makes quick work of it. My second recommendation is one of these rolling stools. It's got the wheels on there, this one happens to be jigs, uh, but this is fantastic because it lets you roll around the project which is typically up on jacks for, you know, until, well, until you get the suspension built, until uh, it's on its rims and tires. And even then, it's still up on jacks quite a bit. Uh, it's right at the perfect height for you to sit and roll around the uh, project. So definitely one of these is fantastic. Highly recommended. My other recommendation is one of these rolling tool carts. Got a nice sun coming in the window here. Middle of winter is nice here in Washington State. But one of these rolling tool carts, you put all of your uh, tools you're gonna use on here that you use about 90% of the time. And this follows you around on your rolling stool. So you're not having to go back and forth, back and forth to your tool chest. Uh, saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of effort. Definitely recommend one of these. My next recommendation is a tall body buck. Now this is a three car garage, but the third bay is full of bicycles and kid stuff and storage. So I'm using two full bays here, um, but this tall body buck allows me to use all of this under space as storage for all of the boxes. Uh, and I've certainly gone through about two-thirds of the boxes are now gone but uh, making this taller has really allowed me to use just two bays uh, on this build uh, but now this means really that I need to do the body work while it's actually on the car because this is probably this is too tall for me to really do any work on this body it, unfortunately so that means I do have to pretty much do it on the car, which is a, isn't a big deal. Um, but I do plan on keeping this body buck because in the winters here, when I want to make modifications and change stuff, the body is going to go back on this buck. And this should, this body buck should be wide enough that I can drive the car underneath this body buck still having access to everything the only thing in my way are these legs here hopefully um, 
and therefore only really taking up one bay to do modifications and things. I still have yet to test whether I can drive underneath this. Certainly the roll bars would have to be off, but uh, that's, my, that's my plan. So this is really a two-in-one, a body buck for the build and a body buck during the winter when the body's off and I'm making changes um, to the car. The next recommendation is a combination um, wood table and it's a low table and this happens to be an old uh, dining room table that I think I got at the secondhand furniture store but this being low allows me to sit because a lot of what you're doing is you can sit like building the pedal box and a hundred other things I can do while I'm sitting so I don't have to stand at my regular workbench the whole time but this being wood, as you can see all these holes in here, allows me to drill straight down and not have to prop something up with blocks of wood. Now it's bending a little bit. With all the drilling you're doing on these panels, being able to drill straight down and not have to stop or worry about pushing too hard or going too far uh, really is nice. And this table um, has built two factory fives uh, so far. And all I gotta do, if this gets two, two Swiss cheese, is I just flip it around and then this whole half of the table has not been used yet. But to be able to sit down and be able to drill straight into this has really uh, saved me a lot of time. I'm sure, you know, this is a solid wood table. This isn't part of the board with a veneer on there or whatever. So this has uh, really helped me out. I strongly recommend low and solid drill right into it, able to sit down, definitely. One more recommendation as far as an engine hoist cherry picker is this is the uh, Harbor Freight two-ton Pittsburgh special, which was totally adequate um, for my build. Um, the biggest thing I was concerned about is clearance in my garage because I have this really low beam here and this garage door opener that, that hangs down. So I was worried about clearance, but all I had to do was move over to the side a little bit to uh, clear the garage door opener and the engine went in there uh, just fine from, as you can see from the video. So you don't need uh, fancy expensive stuff. I don't remember how much this Harbor Freight, I'm sure the price has gone up with, with steel, but I don't remember exactly how much this was, but this is, Total, totally adequate and it's not too tall for a uh, low ceiling two car garage. Well, it's time for a second start. Uh, I've made a lot of changes on this since the first start and the first drive, which was only up and down my cul-de-sac three times. I have moved all of these engine wires from one side of the engine to the other. I've de-pinned the tack module and re-pinned it to go through the firewall. Uh, I redid the, uh, the wires from the tack module to the gas pedal. I need to see if those work okay. I wired up that four flat converter. I wired up all of these uh, lights, which I did test. Those work okay. But I need to make sure this, this thing starts up again before I put the body on there. So that's what this test is going to be. Cross your fingers. Oh yeah, I gotta put the fuse back in for the fuel pump.
here's what happens when you don't put a uh, radiator hose on properly. What a mess. Fantastic. Well, here's the point of failure. Right there. And that. Not good. It is all over the engine bay. I'll wipe most of it off. But there is this. And it'll buff out. I suppose as far as failures go, coolant all over the place because of the lower radiator hose busting. I suppose it's not as bad as it could be. It's not oil, so. Man, it is a mess. <laughs>